What do I do if I believe that you've threatened me? Well, human nature being what it is, I'm probably likely to uh, threaten you right back. Well, there's an interesting video out there by a fellow by the name of Ali Kapadia. It's called Voices from Pakistan. And it's an interesting and absolutely fascinating, in my opinion, mirror image of Western views of the Islamic world in the most brutal, naked stereotypes possible. Um, and I mean the stereotypes that are on both sides. Each side is hopelessly caricaturing the other side in this, hate to use the term, clash of civilizations. Um, and not only that, each side seems to have bought into um, its own caricature of the other side. People seem to believe the, the cartoons that they've drawn of each other. And it's interesting in that um, Mr. Kapadia's uh, video uh, is actually about Drama Hamid Day and uh, how um, cartoons have actually set each other, uh, each civilization or each side of the world or whatever, the two world views at each other's throats, metaphorically speaking at least. We're getting the other side in this video. Um, from some pretty chilling people uh, to some fairly well-spoken and educated and well-thought-out people, the message is inevitably the same. You're putting pressure on us, West. You are constantly, constantly ramping up the pressure on us. You're, you're relentless. You simply never stop. And every so often, uh, wrongly, inevitably, but every so often the result is some lunatic does something insane and blows up uh, the Twin Towers or some other hellish act of, uh, of terrorism or revenge or whatever. <coughs> the um, concluding sentence of the video is, I don't know if I'm spoiling here, um, leave us alone. Now, that's interesting because the voices that I hear, the concomitant voices in the West, even the intelligent ones that say that inevitab inevitably there's some sort of fundamental irreconcilability between the West and Islam, they inevitably say the same thing. Look, I'm a nice guy, but I live in a Western city, in a European city, a Canadian or American city or whatever, and the number of Muslim immigrants is simply getting too much for me to for me to be able to tolerate it. My nerves are just that they can't take it anymore. Leave me alone. Stay in your own country. Why are you bothering us? And, but this tide of immigration, this tide of multi-culti political correctness, which is, in my opinion, simply some people in the West attempts to be realistic about the uh, the tide of immigration is driving some people over the edge. The latest case in point being, of course, Anders Bering Breivik. Each side believes itself. In fact, each side knows itself to be pushed completely against the wall. That each side is convinced, each side knows, the West knows that the Islamic world is ramping up the pressure in terms of terrorism, in terms of immigration, in terms of its absolute relentless drive to uh, dominate the world or spread its religion or whatever. Would it surprise you to know that there are thoughtful, intelligent, educated people who feel that the West is doing exactly the same thing to the Islamic world? And now we're back at the threats. There were quite a few not-so-veiled threats in Voices from Pakistan. And I would ask anyone watching the video to please control themselves when you listen to the people who are saying the things that you might perceive as threats. It's very easy to get immediately on edge and get your back up 
when you feel like you're being threatened. Please exercise some discretion. I believe that Mr. Kapadia is not trying to use these people to make a point. He is simply trying to say, this is how people think. So what I'm inclined to think about when I see these sorts of voices are the people that are saying similar things in our society about the Islamic world. This attempting to deal with this sort of sense of threat can go badly wrong if you allow your th sense of being threatened to overwhelm you. I have jumped all over Thunderfoot in the past because of his um, shock and awe video. Now I think that was simply his ham-fisted, or it may have been simply his ham-fisted attempt to say, don't threaten me because you have a water pistol and I have a bazooka. Use your head man. But he said it in such a way that, of course, it was just a counter threat. And when you threaten somebody, they threaten you right back. We each have cause to believe that we're being threatened by the other side. We each have cause to believe that the other side is deliberately ramping up the pressure on us and we're being pushed to the boiling point. Both of us, both sides feel this way. Doesn't that lead you to conclude something or at least conclude that the solution isn't one side or the other? That we're simply, in a way, seeing the bad side of the shrinking of this world that is created by, the t by technology. People are infinitely more mobile, ideas are infinitely more mobile, we are far, far, far less cocooned than we've ever been in our history, and if anything the barriers are going down faster every day. This is having a profoundly disorienting effect on everyone inhabiting this planet. Are you scared about terrorism, about Islamic fundamentalism, about immigration? The other side is just as scared as you are. Listen to his voice. Thank you.